Welcome to episode five from the balcony. Hope everybody's doing well, staying safe, being healthy. Got a beautiful spring day here. Wish I was out taking pictures. Let's get to today's video. Today we're revisiting the yellow filter. More specifically, we're going to be talking about exposure with the yellow filter. Now back in September, I had done a video test of comparing images made with a yellow filter and without a yellow filter, just to kind of satisfy my curiosity to see if there was really any benefit to me going with the yellow filter, if it was worth the hassle of screwing on when I was out taking the pictures. And since I made that video, which I'll, I'll leave a link above or below or, you know, how it, how it works. Since I made that video, I've since had questions on, well, how did you expose for the yellow filter? Which is a really good question. And I, I regret not actually addressing that when making the video. So the camera I used while making that video was an, an older Pentax 645. And it has a built-in light meter, but I really never really trusted it that much. And so I used the handheld uh, incident meter. And the exposure I used was the same on both the filter shot and the non-filtered shot, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now that I <laughs> now that I think about it. But before I made the video, I had done a few tests. I had looked online and I was getting kind of mixed mixed messages. The baseline was everybody was saying, "Oh, just just open up a stop. That's." That's what you do with the yellow filter. But I went out in my front yard and pointed the camera at different things. And my light meter wasn't telling me this, tell me that. Um, it, and this was back in September. The, there was a lot of uh, more browns and, and, and uh, yellows and stuff in, in the grass and trees and that kind of thing. There were areas I'd point my camera at and the meter reading didn't change at all when I put the yellow filter on. And then I'd find if I pointed it like to the, to the sky, it would, it would go to like a full stop. And then there'd be times where I would point at something and it'd be a third of a stop compensation, just, just depending on uh, how much, I guess, blue light was being reflected back to the camera. So I decided not to use any compensation on the in the video for my my test to, to see the difference my thinking was i tend to overexpose my negatives anyway a little bit so i felt like i was probably covered and if anything i'd just be a little underexposed and that proved to be the case all my negatives were had plenty of information for scanning shortly after making that video i got a new camera so I really never give, gave much more thought to how I was going to compensate for using the L filter because I basically would take the, the meter reading from the, my newer camera, the Pentax 645N. I found that its, its light meter was very accurate. I just meter with through the yellow filter and my results have been very consistent. So after that, video I'd really never had much reason to rethink the the idea of how much exposure compensation was needed for a yellow filter. So should you be opening a full stop on your images if you're metering by hand? That's probably a, a pretty safe way to go. But if you have a camera that allows you to meter through it, um, you might just go ahead and do it that way unless you've tried it and it doesn't work well, then by all means don't. <laughs> I just want to tell you what works for me and uh, really the only way to do it is to try it out for yourself. But the yellow filter can be a pretty useful filter for a lot of different subjects. So how are you exposing for yellow filter? Are you going with a full stop compensation? Are you metering through the filter and just going with what the meter says? 
I'd like to hear your approach, if it's how it's working for you. So thanks for joining me here out in the balcony. And until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.